Hi, I'm Benny Knopp, sound editor and re-recording mixer at Noisy Post. Welcome to my studio. It's a new year and it's time for a fresh speaker calibration. Before we get started, I just want to say it's good to be back. At the start of 2020, I was producing a lot of content, doing a lot of live streams on Twitch, YouTube, tutorials as well. But as the year progressed and because of the kind of work I was doing, I just didn't get the chance to stream or make as much content. It's 2021 and I want to ramp things up again, creating lots of content and getting the community really engaging with each other. I've potentially got some exciting things happening early this year, things that I'll share as they progress. Uh, new partnerships, new programs. I'm going to build some online courses as well. Those online courses won't be free, but they'll be more curated and polished, and there'll be lots of giveaways and things to help you in your own career and with your own workflows. But let's get to it. It's a new year and we want to check our calibration, make sure our speakers are playing at the optimum level. There are lots of great diagrams on the internet to show you where you need to place your speakers. The one thing to think about though, is if you don't have any kind of room correction or delay compensation, you need to make sure each speaker is the exact same distance from your ear. The two things you're gonna need for a speaker calibration is a pink noise signal generator and one of these. It's a sound pressure level meter. You need to make sure you get one that's C weighted. Now, you can also get apps as well with your iPhone, but the microphone in the iPhone isn't fantastic and I would suggest just go to an electronic store and buy one of these. You can get them in different varying prices but you just need something to get the level of each speaker so we can adjust. All right, so let's move into Pro Tools. I try my best to avoid giving Avid all my money, so I only pay for Pro Tools Ultimate when I need it. And at the moment, I don't have a copy of it, so we're gonna use standard Pro Tools. Because this version's only stereo, I've set up six outputs so that we can still do the same calibration, but just without a 5.1 channel. So what we have here is six audio channels, left, right, center, LFE, left rear, right rear, and they're all routed to my different outputs. You can see here, we have a signal generator doing pink noise, which is the last selection here, at minus 20 dBFS. Okay, so we now have a signal generator, which you can basically, I'm just drop and dragging between each channel. I've got it muted, but this is what it'll sound like. <sighs> Loud and dirty. I suggest you wear earplugs while you do this, just so you don't ruin your ears for no good reason. With the sound pressure level meter sitting in your listening position pointed at the center speaker, we're then gonna check the left, center, right and the LFE. Now with our signal coming in at minus 20 dBFS, you wanna then set your speakers. If you're in a small room or smaller room like mine, you wanna set it to 78 dB, but you can adjust it however you like. Big theaters are 85 dB, but we are in a smaller room, so we don't need that kind of that sound level. So we're gonna set it at 78. So left, center, right. We wanna basically change the volume of our speakers until we get to 78 dB. For me, unfortunately with my Motu audio interface, I have a mixer. And so with my speakers all set to their maximum output, so at the amps, I've turned them all up to 100%. So what we do is we go through each channel. So we start with left, center, right, and we get ourselves at 78 dB. When calibrating your sub or LFE, there's two things you need to think about. You need to think about having a low pass filter at set to 80 Hertz so that the pink noise is only in that lower register. The other thing is if you're doing theater mixes, you need to have your sub 10 dB louder than your front speakers. Theaters, uh, they've got that extra 10 dB of headroom, so it means you can push less of your low frequency effects through. But then if you're doing say just a DVD or VOD output, then that doesn't apply. So you have to bring it back again. Your rear speakers need to be three dB lower than the front three speakers. So if we have 78 here, you need 75 at the back. That's because most theaters are calibrated that way, but also you tend to mix your rears a little bit more humbly. And I think by having it lower means you can push sounds into it a bit more. Also, most home theaters, people don't have their rear speakers set up very well. So it makes sure that you're gonna hear that content in your rear speakers. We can only get it so close on the SPL meter, but you wanna make sure everything is within say 0.5 of a dB. Once we're calibrated, what I suggest is you watch a film. Get your favorite film, one that you know quite well. I love Tron Legacy because to me, it's just a great soundtrack. Lots of stuff happening in the rears in uh, some big moments. It's a film that I've seen lots of times and I really know it well. Just like music engineers have their reference tracks, I think you need to have your own reference movies that you watch in your space to help you calibrate and uh, just to acclimatize to the room. Thanks for joining me. 
a new year, fresh calibration. We're ready to go. Speakers are at optimum level. Look, if you've got any other thoughts, questions, please ask in the comments. And uh, I'm really excited about this year and what we've got uh, in store. And I just look forward to connecting with you through the Discord. But also, please like, subscribe, all that jazz, uh, and show your support. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you at the next one. Thank you.